Well, and then, then you know, when we finally got the score, uh, it, it, it didn't say guitar one, two, three, four. It said Bill, Scott, Matt, John. I think we were all pinching ourselves for a while. I was, I think we're all Pat Metheny fans. I, I was a huge, I literally have a stack of notebooks like <laughs> that thick of solos I used to transcribe. And there were tons of Pat Metheny. I have pages and pages and pages and pages of pencil Pat Metheny I took off of recording. So he was one of my major, major uh, inspirations for improvising. And also a writer, you know, he's, he, he's one of the most prolific uh, jazz writers, but also one of the most high, high quality, of course. I mean, just, just great tunes, great, great, great. So anyway, um, yeah, I had to kind of pinch myself and, and, and fight to just uh, not be slobbering all over and in awe of him, you know, and he, but actually, you know, he was so, um, he, he made that easy for me and probably all of us because he is just so about the music and down to earth and just like a normal person to hang out with. And yeah, man, let's just, let's just talk. And he, he spent so much time with us. And the first rehearsal, he came to USC. He had, I think he just played the Monterey Jazz Festival and, um, he had one day off in his tour and he, he, he took the initiative to come all the way down here to, uh, to hang with us for a day and rehearse his piece. And so I think we were all thinking um, it would be three hours max, you know, and his time is very valuable and we got to be ready and how are we going to organize this? And boy, those three hours went by in a flash and, and, and we actually moved to another building on, on the campus because he was ready to do a lot more. And it went on and on and on. I mean, I think we maybe started at 11 a.m. And we, we went, took a break, you know, went all the way through the late afternoon, I think into like 7 or 8 yeah, p.m. Was, was, he would have gone, no exaggeration, I think. He, he would have gone all night with us. We, we would have been up till midnight or 1 a.m. He was just that into the piece. I mean, you know, the experience and that he, he, he realized we really cared about it and wanted it to make it good. And that's what turns him on, I think, and he, he wanted to help us and well, he also had, explore had, in depth. had drug eight Diet Cokes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, must, he's, he, likes he likes Diet, Diet Coke. Coke. <laughs> he likes Diet Coke. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that, that kind of summarizes the whole experience for me. It's just that he was into, he's a true artist. He doesn't have a big head, you know, he's had all this success, but in the end, he is, he is a hardcore musician and, uh, we're really the same way. I mean, we really, really care about the music and getting down, drilling down deep into it. So that kind of is the whole thing for me. And, and it continued, you know, he'd fly out and see us play it somewhere and coach us before the concert. And then after the concert, he'd have a little meeting and he's just so into oh, yeah. ma making it as, as, as good as it could be. So it was great. great it's like time. a lot of the um, <clears throat> well-known band leaders, like if you've read about Miles Davis, um, you know, hard, hard guy to work for. Mm -hmm. um, Pat, I don't know what it's like with his regular groups, but actually one thing that also made us feel kind of special was he, he, he kind of, I think he, in one way or another, he sort of literally said like, I feel like I'm just, I'm forming a new band, you know, and I'm the director of this band. And that, that was like, whoa, really? <laughs> that was pretty cool. But the, the level of um, commitment to him, uh, from him to see this thing realized the way he wanted to. Um, another story. So we did the premiere in Denver. Um, and then the next concert was going to be, I think, in Santa Barbara, like two weeks later. One week later. Was it one, one week, week later? later? Yeah. So we played on the weekend in Denver and then we get home. And then like on Wednesday or something, we get a, um, a text from Pat. And he had he had written this like on... I think he had written it on like notepad or something. So, uh, you know, so anyway, he writes and he goes, guys, I had a couple thoughts, you know, before the concert this coming weekend. And, and uh, just so, you know, just go ahead and uh, read this over and let me know what you think. So I remember I was looking at it on my phone. It had just come. So I, I opened it up and I, I start scrolling and I scroll and I scroll. <laughs> I mean, it was incredible. He had, didn't he have 180 different like points that he like talked eight, to? Eight screens, single space. Yeah, or something it was like insane. That. Like the level of detail mm. that he had, you know, the, the amount of time and effort he had put into reviewing that performance. And, you know. And he always writes in, he always writes in lowercase, 
rarely a, a yeah. punctuation mark. So these, this scroll was just like stream of consciousness, just like, uh, oh, by the way. It was an E.E. E. Cummings poem. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. No, but, you know, the, the, the other thing, even before we met with him, just the process of when he was writing, um, he was really engaged. Like, uh, he wanted to have John videotape his seven-string guitar so he could see, like, how it was set up. And then he, you know, he, would, he sent us, like, some chord voicings and, like, can you guys do this? You know, because he actually, he's used to playing, like, fretting with his thumb and can you do this voicing and the, and and then he recorded little snippets of like the the strumming thing you know you know so he was really really engaged and before it. that he had written to me and he said tell me like how would you describe the character of each player in the group and so you know i went into as much detail as i could and that that was like before he had literally the, the started. moral character <laughs> yeah. oh sorry no well, and then, then you know, when we finally got the score, uh, it 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 didn't say guitar one, two, three, four. It said Bill, Scott, Matt, John. You know, so and apparently when he was, you know, he he sketched out the entire piece musically, and then he kind of sort of orchestrated it. And he said that when he did that, he he had pictures of each of us in his workstation. So it was like, okay, there's there's Bill, there's Scott. You know, like, you know, so it was really personal. Um, and then, you know, after we did the, the first three performances, then a few months later, he flew out uh, with his producer, Steve Rodby, who's amazing. And, and we, he booked Jim Henson Studios, which is a you know, historic place. But the reason he chose that was it was the only place in town he, he knew where there was a central uh, recording room and then three isolation booths because he wanted us to be completely isolated so that he could have total control and you know and you know so there was no bleed from one person to the next and so we had never recorded like that like so we you know we had headphones and for some of it he he actually had us try to follow a click track which worked sometimes and sometimes didn't but i think i think scott and and matt couldn't even see each other you know i was in this the the central room and like queuing like crazy and so it was pretty tricky and Pat is, you know, unbelievably focused, but he's like, he has his vision, how exactly he wants it. So it was like, oh, guys, it was, you know, that was perfect. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it was a, a challenging recording session. And then we, you know, then we finished it. And then we didn't hear anything for like almost four years because he, he had this ongoing thing with his former record label. And so we never knew if it was actually gonna come out. Well, we'd hear from him like once a year, basically. Yeah. Like, well, you know, this, all these projects kind of stacked up on the, you know, on the runway, waiting right. to go off, and I think it's... Yeah, but fine. then he, it worked out beautifully, because then he wrote that piece for Jason, um, and then he decided to do this, and that was, you know, kind of an interesting project, you know, for, for him to, like, turn his attention so much to solo classical guitar and guitar quartet, so. And have a huge wealth of repertory from earlier periods. So, um, you know, whether it's the Assads bringing tango, whether it's people bringing